Well, I thought it was, uh, first of all, just beautifully written. Uh, it's a beautiful story. Um, and it had so much depth, and uh, it was um, avoiding stereotypes. It was refreshing to read something about someone who was uh, conflicted and um, somewhere in the middle, uh, who uh, wasn't a member of the Nazi party, but also not a, a, a hero. He uh, carried a lot of baggage, and so it, it was um, an, an interesting challenge to, to take on. She's extraordinary in this film, and as always, uh, and I, I adore her. She's just uh, marvelous and so much fun to work with. Just to see the devastation and uh, the realization that uh, people on the other side suffered as well. Uh, we don't really see that often in World War II or post-World War II movies. Um, it's almost as if because they were the villains, they were they all deserved what was coming to them. Um, there were a lot of innocent people in Hamburg, obviously, and and uh, um, it's heartbreaking to, to experience that and to see the the grief that they're going through. Yeah, it was it was amazing. You know, the atmosphere that was created from from the top down. You know, from from everyone like uh, like James, the director, and all the producers, and, and Kira, and, and Jason, and Alex. Uh, you know, it really dripped down from them that they created this atmosphere of um, just a really friendly and, and warm working environment that, that is then, in my opinion, conducive, conducive to uh, really good performances. Uh, I just thought it was, it, was, it was such a powerful story and so beautifully written that uh, I really wanted to be a part of it. And, and then the book as well is so, so brilliant that I, yeah, straight away I, I wanted to be a part of it. I think they can expect a really, really powerful, moving um, story with, with really exceptional performances from, from Jason and, and Kira and, and Alex, yeah. This story is the most extraordinary moment in history, is that right at the end of the Second World War, a few months after the end of the war, and the British were given the job of running a massive part of Germany, centered on Hamburg, and a British officer invites his wife, Kira Knightley, over to join him. And she's extremely anti-German because they lost their child in the bombing in the Blitz in London. And even worse, her husband allows the German occupants to stay in the house. And it's very interesting how her journey from hatred to affection alters during the course of the film. Well, it was an amazing cast. Obviously, Kira Knightley was the first one to come on board. So, of course, made things a lot easier to have her on board. Um, and then my dream wish was Alexander Skarsgård for Stefan Lubert, the German, because he is different for us, but he's also extremely handsome and somebody that you would perhaps be drawn towards. And then uh, Jason Clark, who's a really terrific actor to play, to play the husband in the film. Well, I enjoyed two things. Working with three world-class actors was fantastic. Um, and, but also creating these worlds, these big, devastated worlds of huge ruins and um, Armageddon, really, on Earth, which is exactly what it looked like. And I think for an audience today to realize that we've really got to work together as individuals and as governments to work towards reconciliation in order to make sure that that never happens again. I think if you're going to tell a story about Armageddon and love in the time of Armageddon, you need a big screen. You need a big screen to see the scale of that destruction and you need a big screen to feel the scale of the emotions that they're going through. And I think that's that's really why it should feel intimate and epic at the same time. I always think that's an important quality of high quality drama, that you have these very intimate moments. It might be just a small kiss or a finger running along the collarbone against these massive, massive landscapes of what looked like Syria, but far, far worse, which is exactly what it looked like. I want the audience to connect with their fellow human beings in the cinema. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those films which centers on empathy and on the fact that we're all the same 
there is very little difference between human beings. And actually, if you can just see beyond the photographs, beyond the newsreels, and understand that these people have ambitions, they have love affairs, they have funerals, they have laughs, they have joy and sadness in their lives. I think that's what a film like this can teach. It's like, don't judge people by their cover. Spend time with them. I think they're going to expect a real romance of a kind of classical style. They're going to see a story of reconciliation. It's very, very um, pertinent to our times. Uh, and a story of real redemption, actually. The story of character that Keira Knightley goes on. By the end, she's a changed woman. And it's all done through love and tenderness and compassion. I felt that everything was earned, that, I, that I, I didn't know much about those months after the war and, you know, and the mess that was there, the fact that, yes, Germany had committed a lot of wrong, but it had suffered greatly as well. And, um, and the fact that in the relationship of Rachel and Lewis, you can see the relationship to the world and what we all you know, hope to strive for in terms of building or destroying. She was great. Yeah, I mean, we, we worked together as husband and wife on Everest as well. And she was, you know, it's a very, you know, they're, a, you know, a very a couple with a lot of distance between them, you know, and a, a need for intimacy. So it helped knowing her and trusting her, and you know, I mean, on a personal, it was great to see a woman that had, you know, had children since I had children, you know, and, and just relate and, and touch base with her again and, and play. Because it tells what you can't talk about. You know, when you see this, that scene with me driving through the ashes with her in the car. And, you know, you, you can have dialogue and exposition, or you can have, you know, a gentleman in an old German uniform with one leg, you know, giving me a British salute as I drive past. You know, and that breaks my heart as an audience member. You understand that these are people trying to live and survive, even though, you know, they're not all Nazis and bad guys. They're, they're trying to eke out grace and dignity and a life in the rubble. I, I feel a bit bad when I cry at our own scenes, as bad as laughing at your own jokes, but I, this film makes me cry every time I've seen a cut of it, every time I read the script back to, to ourselves. It's a testament to the performances. It's, it's a testament moving, to the, it's, yeah. about, it's about how a marriage survives unimaginable loss and trauma um, and the strength of love. And I think at a time when we're pulling away from Europe and our neighbours, this is a film about trying to rebuild Europe and trying to rebuild the commonality between us and the humanity that, that does connect us. Um, I so, think yeah, I, I think it, as, a, you know, as a film, it's the story of a, of a marriage, whether a marriage can survive, and it's also the story of a passionate love affair, which, which is an obstacle to that marriage, but also, a, you know, a fun thing to watch. It's about can a marriage survive this, can a country survive war kind of it's it's about rebuilding and rebirth and it's so it's um hopefully the audience will be as we were wondering where kira's heart will lean <laughs> towards the end of the movie Kira had to actually play two very emotional scenes, completely conflicting with different actors. So she was just incredible. She sort of retreated and put her headphones on and was, you know, had to stay in character to just get through it. But she was amazing. Then I thought, wow, we've got we've got a perfect person to play. Frankly, the um, the structure of the story is completely destroyed if you don't have three characters giving that much uh, of yeah. themselves and three beautiful performances. The the nature of the story is such that if you don't fall in love with all three all of, them, of them, it's yes. not going to work for you. So we were blessed and, and delighted to have the three of them. What's really exciting about the story is that um, we've seen the stories of the Second World War, but we haven't seen what happens in the aftermath of the event. What's happening is that you're, you've got a city that is left completely devastated, and how does it go about? Uh, recovering its infrastructure with, with, you know, when nothing is left. So politically, it's really exciting, but also socially too. Um, and of course, there's this beautiful uh, romance in between as well. We got to work in some of the most amazing locations. In fact, the, the, the day that it was the most cold, we were on a, um, an old uh, train station. And what they do is just amazing. They completely revamp the place to make it look period. So what's really exciting about working on those sets is it completely transforms the place.
what's so exciting is it's a world that we don't we don't get to see anymore, obviously. Um, but what this, the film shows is the devastation that's left behind after the war, um, and also the luxury that some of the British were able to enjoy, um, which is actually kind of shocking in contrast. Um, and that's what the film really draws out really beautifully, the sort of stunning interiors and uh, exteriors um, of uh, what was left over in Hamburg, but also what was completely devastated. I've been in a number of World War II films. I've watched definitely a lot of World War II films, and, um, and I've never seen a film that's about this specific part of it, the aftermath of a conflict. And I think just that, that idea of how on earth they rebuilt not just their countries and their cities, but themselves, um, and the idea that that was, that that was possible, um, I think was just um, a really remarkable thing. So I was interested in kind of telling that story. She's a very torn lady. I think at the centre of this film is a kind of love triangle. And I, I think what I loved about the script is that you very much saw the story from all of the different points of view. And you don't necessarily want her to go in one direction or another. You completely understand both sides of it. Um, and, and I think I like that. I liked its complexity. You know, I think it's a very grown-up film. It's a very grown-up love story. Um, and, and I think, you know, that part of it that is about essentially a couple who have gone through a huge tragedy, who are trying to find each other again. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people hopefully haven't been through it in that extreme way, but can kind of identify with. Um, no, I love them. I've worked with um, Jason before, and I, I just love working with him. And uh, Alexander is one of the loveliest men in the world, so it was great. Just after the war, my grandfather was a governor of Pinneberg, uh, just outside Hamburg. He did a very unusual thing. He requisitioned a house that normally you would throw the German owners out of into a camp. And he said, no, we will share the house. And they shared the house for five years. And I always thought that was, you know, an extraordinary setup for a story. Um, former enemies living together. And um, it was that really, that was the seed, as you say, for, for my own version of that story. Well, that's a good question in an age where you know television is doing so well. But it is—it feels like a proper cinema experience, cinematic experience, and uh, it's very gorgeous to look at. And sometimes I'll watch a movie and I think, well, I could have seen that on TV. But I think this definitely has to be seen in the cinema to be fully appreciated. It's very atmospheric. It's very painterly. Um, I think uh, James, the director, has done a beautiful job with the look of it. Um, so yes, it's a. It is it's, it's something almost old school about it, um, in, in the best meaning of that phrase. Well, it's very moving. Uh, it's very elegant. It's uh, thoughtful. It's quite timely, I think. Uh, not that we planned that, with the resonance with Europe. Um, and probably Kira's best performance, in my view. It's about reconciliation. It's about how do you address, how do you balance forgiveness and justice? Um, how do you understand the other um, and get over, overcome prejudice and resentment? Um, so there's some big themes there. And hopefully, uh, you know, a, a moving relational story as well.